Hello everyone, it's Diego Doom here. Today I'm bringing another review. Today I'll be reviewing Sentinel T-Rex number three, Getter One. This version of Getter One comes from the 1998 OVA, Getter Rubble Armageddon. After being framed for the death of Dr. Sao Tome, Ryoma is sent to prison. Ryoma is soon released from prison when Dr. Sao Tome returns from the grave. Dr. Sao Tome threatens the world with his new creation, the Shin Getter Dragon. Ryoma and the Getter team pilot their original Getter machines to stop Dr. Sao Tome from finishing Shin Getter Dragon. Before the Getter team can reach Shin Getter Dragon, they must first face off against Dr. Sao Tome's army of reanimated Getter machines. Be sure to check out the 1998 OVA Getter Robo Armageddon, it is absolutely fantastic. Sentinel T-Rex number 3, Getter 1 is another fantastic collaboration between Sentinel and T-Rex. Getter 1 has a fantastic sculpt, fantastic pay applications, fantastic accessories, and a fantastic range of articulation. First, let's take a look at Getter 1's accessories. Getter 1 comes with a pair of open hands, two pairs of holding hands, a pair of Getter tomahawks, a pair of tomahawk holders, a pair of Getter machine guns, one additional faceplate, one Getter wing cape, and one stand. First, let's take a look at the hands. Each of the hands have a fantastic sculpt, fantastic paint apps. First, for the open hands here, as you can see, these are very nicely painted and very nicely detailed. So we'll kind of focus on this. We have the very nice vibrant red and also some very cool panel lines going on. A very nice robotic sculpt too. So definitely very cool here. Next, we have our first pair of holding hands. Same great sculpt of paint apps. These hands are meant to hold the Getter Tomahawks. Very nice here. And then finally, we have our last pair of hands. These are more holding hands. Again, same great sculpt of paint apps. And these hands are meant to hold the Getter machine guns. Very nice here. The hands attach via a straight peg system, so we'll zoom out some and grab our figure. All we have to do is simply pop off the fist, like so, it reveals a straight peg. We'll grab one of our holding hands here, pop this on, and that's it. A very simple and easy swap. Next, we have our pair of Getter Tomahawks. Now, these are absolutely fantastic. So, for the paint apps, a very nice metallic silver for the club portion and the blade portion. They're very nicely detailed as well. Definitely very cool. How these are held, we'll grab one of the Tomahawks. All we have to do, pop off the end cap here, grab our figure, and simply push the Tomahawk down into the holding hand. So push it in like so, and we'll go ahead and cap that right back off. So grab the cap here and peg that into the bottom, kind of get that there, whoops. And that's it. So now we can slash the invader. So this is definitely very cool, very nice. Furthermore, we can actually store the Tomahawks on Getter One's back. So let's grab this one, pop this all off here, and get this into place. So first, what we need to do is open up the panel here in the lower back. Zoom in some, you'll see this panel. All we have to do, pull this out like so. Comes out just like that, and also tip it up. You'll see there's a hook inside there, so very nice there. Next, we'll grab our Tomahawk holders. These are the holders, they're pretty simple and very cool, but they're very vital to attach these to the back. So we'll grab one of our Tomahawks here. First, what we're gonna do is slide the holders on. Let's kind of zoom out and focus all this. So we're going to put one on like this, just like that, we'll spin it around. We'll grab our other one and slide it on like so. So just like that, kind of spread this out just a little bit. Then we'll grab our cap and cap this right back off. So that's the first part of attaching all this. Next, we'll grab our other tomahawk, pull this off, and what we're gonna do is actually kind of thread this into the back. So we have this, push this in like so, then we'll grab our figure here, and we're going to actually thread this tomahawk in to this hook inside and then back into this. So kind of bear with me here, it can be tough. And please be extra careful when doing this. So we're gonna push this in like so, just like that, kind of work it in and be cautious. Then we'll grab our other tomahawk and bring that up, get this arm out of the way. So get this like this, work it in until it reaches the other hole. So, whoops, Let's see if we can get that in there. Kind of bear with me here. It's almost in there. Again, just be extra careful, work it into place. And that's it, so it's stored just like this, that's a very cool feature. So from the front, it looks fantastic. So definitely very cool here, a very nice feature. Let's go ahead and pop this all off, so bear with me again. Again, 
when attaching this and removing this, just be careful. You don't want to break anything. So we'll get this off, wiggle that out, and that's it. So pretty cool there. Next, we have our pair of Getter machine guns. Again, these are absolutely fantastic. Kind of focus all this here as you can see. A fantastic sculpt, a fantastic paint apps with a very nice, vibrant, and clean white. Then we have the gunmetal finish going on for the barrels here. Definitely very cool, very nice with the magenta here for the scope. Absolutely amazing. Now, this is not articulated like our SOC Getter Ones, Getter Machine Guns, but still very cool. So, no adjustable stock, and plus, this handle will not move, but still a very nice accessory. How these are held, we'll grab the machine gun holding hands, and all you have to do is simply slide the handle down into the hand that kind of wraps into place. So push it down like so. Let's kind of keep this all in focus. So we'll slide this down like so. Whoops, almost there. Just kind of slide it in there and then it clicks into place and that's it. So very nice there. This is definitely very cool. Next we have our additional faceplate. So for the extra faceplate here, as you can see, it's getter one with a more mean looking face. So kind of focus all this, so pretty cool there. So this is the first plate. And then this is the one we have currently on, which is, it seems like getter one is more neutral as compared to this angry face. Kind of focus on this, a lot of stuff to work with. Kind of zoom out some, there we go. So as you can see, we have our static face and our angry face. So to attach this, we'll go ahead and pop off the head here. So all we have to do, You'll see the actual crease here. Just kind of wedge your finger in there and work it out. And just be careful that you don't break the side tips here. So get this off best we can. It's off like that. We'll grab our new face plate, which is angry, and pop that on. Whoops, just like so. And that's it. So now getter one is angry and ready for action. So it's pretty cool there. So go ahead and reattach our head, and that's it. Very nice. Next, we have our Getter Wing Cape. So this cape here is absolutely fantastic. A very nice, high quality piece of cloth, and also inside, there are three wires to hold dynamic poses, so pretty cool there. And also at the bottom, the edges are tattered, so definitely very cool, very nicely done. Now, to attach this, I must admit, this can be difficult and nerve wracking, so let's kind of Get this on the place. So two things to be worried about. First off, the connection here is this bow-like loop. And if you max this out, you'll see it begins to get thin. And also, if you're not careful, if you pull it out too much, it can actually separate the stitching at the top of the cape. So we're gonna go ahead and try and attach this, so bear with me. So we'll grab our figure here. First, we have to pull out this panel in the top center of the upper back. So we'll just pull this out like so. It comes up about this much. And then what we're gonna do we're gonna take our cape with the bow and kind of latch it on. I go about it this way, so latch it on to one side and pull it over to the other side. If you can see what I'm doing there, just be extra careful. You don't wanna break this loop. Once it's like that, I'll hold it in place and then pull this loop down and forward inside to this protruding red portion. So hook it, whoops, and it came off. So let me try this again. So again, this can be difficult and nerve wracking because I'm afraid this loop might break. So please be extra careful. Let's see if we can get that on. So that's that. So we have it here, hold it in place and tip it down and it should kind of fall suit. There we go. So now it slid down, pull it all the way down, have it in place like that. Looks like this, push this panel back in then tip the side portions in underneath the back panels, and that's it. So now, Getter One is complete with the cape. So this is very nice and absolutely fantastic. But again, I really don't like the way this cape was implemented because so many things could go wrong with it. But still, it's very cool. Very nice there. Our final accessory is the stand. So the stand here is fantastic and standard. So with a very nice wide grid base, so pretty cool there. Also with a nicely articulated arm, then we have the head that can attach clips to. So we'll kind of focus all this, you can see. So initially we have these short clips here, which is pretty cool. Underneath are the longer clips, which is very nice. You can store these underneath the stand. But in my experience, 
I don't feel that these clips provide enough support for Getter One. Luckily, they've given us an accessory stand piece, which is right here, so very nice there. So to attach this, pull off the head like so, and that's it. And then just slide this right on to the top of the stand. So pretty cool there. Now to attach all this, we have to grab our figure. So we'll grab our figure here, spin around to the lower waist. You'll notice there's a panel here in the lower waist. Now, if you guys have seen my review for Black Getter, you'll know pulling out this panel at that time was very difficult and I wound up scratching the paint on my Black Getter figure. So this time around, I have the opposite problem. The panel here is way too loose to stay in. Now, I don't mind that because it being loose eliminates the risk of me scratching the paint on my Getter One figure. So again, if you have this figure and this panel is very tight, to get it out, just kind of tip it side to side and pull it up easily. But be careful, you don't want to scrape the paint on the piece or the figure. So kind of pop that back out, kind of went in there. So to attach the stand to Getter One, all we have to do is simply push it in there, kind of keep this all in focus, push it in like so, and that's it. So very nice. So now let's take a moment to back up and put Getter One in a seamless flying pose. Now we have Getter One in a seamless flying pose and it looks absolutely fantastic. It's nice that Getter One has an accessory that allows us to attach the stand to his back. Now we can put Getter One in truly seamless jumping and flying poses. If you have any issues with the stand properly supporting Getter One, you can easily fix that issue by tightening up the screws on the neck of the stand. When removing the back panel on Getter One's waist, please be extra careful. It seems this time around I got lucky with the waist panel on my figure being fairly loose. Now I can pull out the waist panel and attach Getter One to the stand without running the risk of scratching off the paint. If for some reason you are having issues removing the waist panel, carefully alternate pulling up side to side on the panel and you should be able to remove it. Now that we have the accessories out of the way, let's go ahead and take a look at the Getter One figure itself. Getter One has a fantastic sculpt, fantastic panel applications, and a fantastic range of articulation. First, let's start with the head. We can look left, right, up, and very far down. The shoulders have a nice range of rotation. We can also rotate these a full 360, get that all the way around. The arms come out 90 degrees. We have an upper bicep swivel. For the elbows, they bend this much initially, but if we pull on the elbow joint here, we can get some very nice double jointed elbows. Now, one thing to note about the arms, the swivel is only in the bicep and not the elbow joint itself. If you try to swivel the forearms at the elbow joint, you will snap off your forearm, so please be mindful of that. So get this back into place. The fist here are on straight pegs, and also we can pull up the straight peg and tilt and spin these very freely, so very nice there. In the upper chest, you'll notice as we move the arms around, these breast plates actually separate, so that's some very nice engineering going on, pretty cool there. In the lower torso here, we can lean forwards, backwards, twist side to side, lean side to side. Also inside, we have a gimmick. So let's go ahead and pop this panel out and now we can perform, get this out there. We can perform the getter beam. So definitely very cool there, very nice. Moving down to the legs here. Initially, we can kick forwards about this much, backwards this much, out to the side this much. If we pull on the hip joint, we can increase that range of motion. So pop this out and now we can kick up pretty high Move pretty far back and off to the side quite a bit. So definitely very cool here. We have a thigh swivel going on. And also you'll notice this ring here. Sometimes when you extend the legs, this ring will come all the way out. If you have issues with it, all you have to do is simply push it back into place and it'll stay. So pretty cool there. So pop that back in and that ring's not going anywhere. Moving down to the knees here, you'll notice we have some more great engineering going on. So first and foremost, these knees are single jointed, but as we bend the knee, you'll see this panel disappear. So Bend it and it folds all the way down on its own. Pretty cool. When you straighten the knee back out, you'll notice this panel stays down. All you have to do, push it back up into place and that's it. So some great engineering going on. So again, we bend it, it's automatic. Straighten it out, push it back up and now we're back into place. So pretty cool there. The feet can tilt and swivel. So very nice bend there. And then finally, the toes are articulated. So we have a very nice hyper articulated getter one figure let's go ahead and pop this panel right back in there like so in terms of sculpted paint apps this figure is stunning let's start with the head here zooming pretty close so we have the very nice vibrant red we have the compound green windows going on the metallic silver going on for the 
inner mouth area, then we have the very nice yellow eyes. We have the metallic silver for the tips on the sides of the head. For the upper chest here, kind of keep this all in focus, we have the vibrant red and the very cool compound green going on for the breastplates. Very nice there. We have the gold tips for where the tomahawks would pop out at. In the stomach area, a very nice, clean, shiny white. For the waist area, we have the black band and the yellow. Also on the forearms here, we have our blades and they're done in a very nice metallic silver and also these are very sharp. Moving down to the legs, we have a red and white. Definitely very cool. And all this is very shiny and very clean. This figure is absolutely fantastic. And honestly, I think this is a really great representation of Getter One as he appeared in the OVA. So it's definitely very cool, very nice and round, and definitely very true to form. Now, something I must mention, I'm not particularly a fan of how long this ball joint peg stem is for the head. You see this, kind of focus all that. Pop this off. This is a very long stem, and when you're posing this figure and taking shots of them, Getter One could look a little bit strange. So let's just pop this on here. So if we have him looking up from the head portion, not necessarily the neck, it gets kind of weird in there. As you can see, you have that massive gap going on. Keeps on focus, and that doesn't look too good. But still, just a minor issue there but still this figure is absolutely fantastic so now that we have the getter one figure out of the way let's do some very quick size comparisons for size comparison first up we have getter one with black getter both figures look absolutely fantastic and definitely very cool together you can see both figures are the same height so very nice there Next, we'll grab two SOC figures. So first up, we have the Solo Chagokin GX52 Getter 1. As you can see, our Sentinel Getter 1 is the same height as our SOC Getter 1. Now, one thing I must admit, our Sentinel Getter 1 really makes our SOC Getter 1 look very dated and very toy-like. But despite that, I would still absolutely recommend picking up both of these figures. Next, we have the Solo Chagokin GX45 Shin Mazinger Z. So you can see, very nicely scaled together. Definitely very cool. Very nice there. Next, grab some SRC figures. So first up, we have the first release of Mazinger Z, and he is tiny compared to Getter 1. Next, let's grab Mazen Kaiser Skull, and he is still smaller than our Sentinel Getter 1. And then finally, let's go ahead and put him back here. We'll throw in our SRC Grindizer, and Grindizer is still shorter than Getter 1. But let's go ahead and throw in the two big guns here. So let's get these guys out of the way, and we'll go ahead and grab our SRC Shin Getter 1. We'll kind of move things off to the side here. And then finally, let's go ahead and throw in my favorite super robot of all time, and as we all know, that is Mazenkaiser. So, Mazenkaiser and Shin Getter One are bigger than our Sentinel Getter One figure. This looks very nice, a very neat shot here. Definitely very cool. And then for the fun of it, let's go ahead and throw in another Sentinel product, and that is the Realbot Organ. So, these figures look great together, and it's a very unique combination, so pretty cool there. Now that we have the size comparison out of the way, let's go ahead and conclude this review. To conclude the review, Sentinel T-Rex number 3, Getter 1, is another fantastic collaboration between Sentinel and T-Rex. Getter 1 has a fantastic sculpt, fantastic pay applications, fantastic accessories, and a fantastic range of articulation. This figure is definitely very nice, very neat, and very cool. I absolutely recommend that everyone picks this figure up. Also, be sure to check out the 1998 OVA, Get a Robo Armageddon. It is absolutely fantastic. This has been another review by Diego Doom. Thank you very much for watching, and please stay tuned for more figure reviews. Like, comment, and subscribe.